What's up guys, we're back to another one. If you're new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the brand new 2024 Toyota Highlander, courtesy of Younger Toyota in Hagerstown, Maryland. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. So today we're in this one because the Highlander does come with some excellent safety. You do get legendary reliability. That is what Toyota is known for after all. You also get two years or 25,000 miles of complimentary maintenance. So that's gonna save you some money there too. So ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. As you can imagine, there are several different trim levels for the 2024 Highlander. First one being the LE starting at $39,270. XLE for $42,420, which by the way is the trim that we have today. XSE for $44,015. Limited starting at $46,525. And lastly, the Platinum starting at $49,725. That was all pricing for the front wheel drive configuration. If you wanted to add all wheel drive, you can do that simply at $1,900. $50 to any of those trim levels. But regardless of trim level that you go with, the power plant is going to be the same. Powering the Beast is a 2.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder, putting out 265 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, 310 pound feet of torque coming in at 1,700 RPM. That power being sent to front wheels or all wheels through an eight speed automatic. Zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 7.2 seconds. And I don't know why this number stuck on my head, but I remember the V6 back in the day came in at 6.8 eight seconds so a little bit slower with the turbocharged engine but that's okay mpg numbers then coming in at 22 in the city 29 on the highway for the front wheel drive 21 city 28 then on the highway for the all-wheel drive taking regular unleaded fuel and for the record that is one mile per gallon better than the naturally aspirated v6 that the highlander came with in 2022 but so then before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in our highlander i do want to mention to you guys the drive mode there's actually some buttons located directly behind the shifter buttons will include eco normal sport and snow and then if you were to go with an all-wheel drive variant of the highlander you're going to add to that mud and sand and a rock and dirt mode as well ultimately adjusting things like the shift points the throttle response the steering sensitivity and all-wheel drive system engagement actually as well so now having got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find it straight away let's put the highlander here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2024 highlander here up to speed. All right, merging onto the highway, go. <laughs> it's not bad. It'll get the job done. Um, yeah, it's nothing crazy. It's nothing that really, really impressed me, but you're not gonna have any issues with merging onto the highway either. And uh, yeah, that was kind of merging onto the highway right there. We got up to 55 miles per hour, which is what the speed limit is here. So yeah, that's plenty fine. It's just nothing that's gonna knock your socks off. I'll just put it that way, but didn't expect it to, but anyways. But then as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 13.3 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 13.3 inch solid rear discs. As far as that 60 is your stopping distance goes, that comes in at 116 feet. That is insanely impressive on paper. And let's just go ahead and hit the brakes since there is actually nobody behind us now. That's brilliant. Yeah, it definitely leans more on the firmer side of things, which you don't always find in SUVs especially. And actually, when it comes to that number, 116 feet, that's a sports sedan number, you guys. Believe it or not, typically with SUVs, you're gonna find the upper 120s I've seen as bad as 139 feet for the, like the Volkswagen Atlas, for example. So three row SUVs typically land in the 130s, if not the upper 120s, so 116 feet, that is a sports sedan number. So that is excellent because if somebody comes to a quick stop in front of you and you got kids in the car, you definitely wanna know that you wanna come to an equally quick stop in this thing. And you could definitely do that with a 60 to zero number of 116 feet. So I absolutely 100% love that. But then touching on suspension and handling, up front you're gonna get an independent McPherson strut front suspension. In the back, trailing wishbone type rear suspension, front stabilizer bar. As far as ride quality goes, it's been perfectly fine in my short little test drive here today. So 100% don't have any issues there. As far as steering feel goes, ooh, that is a loose steering feel, hang on. Let me put it in sport. It does tighten up a little bit. It's a little heavier of a weight to it in that sport driving mode, but man, if you put it in normal driving mode or eco, it is such a loose steering feel. Now, I don't expect it to be super heavy. This isn't a sports car after all, but 
Typically with SUVs, you do find a looser steering feel, but this is pretty darn loose. But anyways, then touching on cabin noise, we are going 56 miles per hour right now. And it's honestly, it's perfectly fine. So I definitely don't have any issues there. I do want to mention with the cabin noise though, an acoustic laminated front windshield does come standard. But then if you were to go with the limited or the platinum, you're also going to get acoustic laminated front side glass as well so that is a luxury feature right there that you typically find in like bmw or mercedes-benz so if you want that super serene cabin go with the limited or the platinum trim level i'll just put it that way the touching on rear visibility here i can see perfectly fine out the back it's pretty much as you would expect the three row suv to look like the second row headrests are kind of big but it's okay i can still see perfectly fine but touching on forward visibility rain sensing windshield wipers do come standard for all trim levels so whenever the highlander detects any kind of mist or rainfall it's going to automatically turn on those windshield wipers for you so just one last thing you got to worry about there did want to also mention though there is a head-up display that is going to come on the platinum trim level so it's going to project your speed speed limit and safety information up on your windshield so it better help you keep your eyes on the road so i gotta love that as well but anyways that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review you guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 toyota highlander all right and so here she is you guys the new 2024 toyota highlander finished in wind chill pearl which by the way is a 425 dollars paint option in case you were curious but i actually like it it definitely does look like a pearl as opposed to a metallic so I, I think it looks pretty darn good there's not many pearl colors out there but anyways let's go ahead and start with where this one is made taking a look at the bin first character is the number five indicating that the highlander is built and assembled here in the u.s in case you were curious but starting up front black painted front grille will come standard with either silver or chrome trim dependent upon the trim level that you go with of course to the sides led projector headlights do come standard you gotta love that with led daytime running lights you get the automatic feature you also get automatic high beams so if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams and when that vehicle is gone it's going to automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you there so my wife loves that one adaptive front lighting system coming on the platinum trim level so that's pretty cool so when you're going around the bend at night those headlights are going to swivel depending upon the steering angle better help illuminating what is around the bend so you're less likely to hit sasquatch or an alien or whatever the case so that's pretty cool as well led fog lights do come standard down below there however if you were to go with the limited or platinum you will get high output led fog lights so a little better illumination there also, there is a silver front lip for the platinum trim level. Otherwise, you're going to get the matte black front lip that you guys are looking at right now. So anyways, that pretty much rounds out the front end of the Highlander. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, so now since we are around to the side of this one, roof rails coming on the XLE trim level end up. Rear privacy glass coming standard for all trim levels across the board. You're going to find a gloss black A-pillar for all trim levels across the board. That's kind of one of those distinguishing kind of exterior pieces that you really don't see on other SUVs, but the Highlander. So it's one of the things you can kind of tell it apart. So that's pretty cool. Chrome belt line molding does come standard. Taking a look at the side mirrors. They are body colored power adjustable side mirrors. They will be heated with integrated turret signals. If you were to go with the limited or platinum, that is gonna add to those side mirrors, the power folding feature, reverse gear tilt down feature as well. And you actually will also get some puddle lights with the Highlander logo go illuminated onto the ground at night as well so that's kind of cool but i take a look down at the wheel setup of course they're going to differ amongst the trim levels 18 inch alloys for the le and xle trims but the 20 inch alloys for the xse limited and platinum trim levels all kind of varying in design so anyways we do got the xle trim again so that's what they look like but anyways that pretty much rounds out the side profile Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, and so climbing into the tall grass for you guys back here, all the way to the top, you will find a body colored shark fin antenna. Just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light, just below that rear window wiper, of course. LED taillights though, do come standard for all trim levels across the board. You don't always find that. Sometimes they're halogen. So I do like that they're LEDs. You do have the trim level badging found at the rear tailgate. So if you were to happen to wander onto a Toyota lot, maybe on a Sunday, just take a look at the back tailgate. You'll see what trim level you're currently looking at. So that's kind of cool. And then all the way underneath here, you will find a single exhaust outlet, of course, is tucked away. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next here. As always, here is that exhaust clip.
All right, Simonel, since we are around to the back of the Highlander, when it comes to opening up that rear tailgate, it is gonna be a hands-free power tailgate for all trim levels but the LE, actually. And that's newly standard for all trim levels but the LE. Before, it used to come on only the top trim or two. So that is pretty cool. So all you need to do if you have your hands full is simply walk up behind the Highlander, just kick your foot underneath, and it is gonna automatically open up for you. Of course, there's a button on the tailgate itself. There's a button on the key fob then as well. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 16 cubic feet behind that third row. Of course, you can fold that third row down, bumping that up to 48.4 cubic feet. And then with all rows folded, that comes in at 84.3 cubic feet, which is pretty much right in line with the competition, like the Honda Pilot, for example. It's all pretty much the same. But of course, that's a 60-40 split in case you're curious. There is some cargo lighting back there. You're going to find a cargo cover. There's a 12-volt power outlet. You do have some tie-down anchors, grocery bag hooks. There's some in-floor storage underneath to that cargo floor as well and there's a little bit of hidden in-floor storage kind of to the back corner too so that's pretty cool it actually has a nice little cover over top of it so it really is hidden so i like that in case anybody is curious if it has a fix a flat or a spare tire if you were to actually go up underneath of the highlander right next to the exhaust underneath you will find a spare tire as opposed to the fix a flat which you guys know i personally love but then make your way up to the rear legroom that comes in at 27.7 inches for the third row for reference i'm an even six feet tall not a ton of space back there of course for record, uh, 27.7 inches is actually less than my old Ford Mustang GT. So that kind of gives you an idea of the third row legroom at least. Rear ventilation does come standard for all three rows though. So I love that. And that's for uh, this up on the ceiling of this thing. Also, third row does have cup holders. Also wanted to mention that. But then make our way to the second row legroom. That is going to come in at 41 inches even for reference. Again, I'm still an even six feet tall. This is how much space I have back there. Captain's chairs are going to come standard, but we do have an optional three row bench setup in our particular Highlander or spec that we have today. So again, the captain's chairs are going to come standard. So you got the two seats in the middle row there. You can just walk up the middle if you like, but bench seating is available. So USB charging ports though do come standard for their second row passengers. There is a 120 volt power outlet available. We don't have it. Heated second row is going to come with the platinum and then rear window sunshades actually do come standard for all trim levels, but that bottom LE trim. So I definitely am a big fan of that because a lot of times I'll get my kids Chick-fil-A or McDonald's and we'll sit in a parking lot and eat it and uh, one of them always has the sun in their eyes and that is why they made rear window sunshades. But so they make our way up to the front seats. Fabric trim seats do come on the LE trim level. Soft text upholstery for the XLE and XSE trims. Leather seating for the limited and platinum trims. Eight-way power driver seat does come standard. Eight-way power adjustable passenger seat for the XLE trim level and up. Heated front seats come standard for all trim levels but the LE and then ventilated front seats coming on the limited and the platinum. Overall seating was plenty comfortable. You definitely shouldn't have any issues taking this thing on a long road trip here. But so then taking a look at the steering wheel, it is tilt and telescoping and actually is leather wrapped for every single trim level across the board, even the LE. So you gotta love that. Heated steering wheel then coming on the limited and platinum trim levels. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key here. Uh, you got your Highlander lettering on the one side. That's pretty cool. And then you, when you flip it over, lock, unlock the button to pop the rear tailgate, of course, but it is all keyless entry with a push button start that comes standard for all trim levels so all i'm going to do is simply just put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just to the left of the air vents there once started up when it comes to the gauges 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster is going to come on the limited and the platinum otherwise you are going to get what you are currently looking at which i actually don't mind tachometer is on your left speedometer is on your right there is a nice design to it but then there is that also that digital gauge cluster front and center to control what is on there there are steering wheel mounted control controls found on the left side of the steering wheel. Gives you things like your outside temperature. There's a digital speedometer, how many miles you have left until you hit empty. There's some safety information, radio information, all wheel drive information, there's all kinds of different stuff. So pretty much everything you could possibly want on the digital portion of the gauges there. Let's say then make your way to overall interior quality. Power moonroof is going to come on the XLE, XSE, and limited trim levels. Then you're gonna find a panoramic glass roof for the platinum trim level. But overhead sunglass holder does come standard and you got the school bus mirror on that overhead sunglass holder as well so you can spy on the rear passengers a little bit there home light controls for the xle trim level and up that's for up to three different garage doors located on the bottom portion of that rear view mirror there wireless phone charger for the xle trim level and up ambient lighting for the limited and platinum trim levels but then tri-zone climate control does come standard for every single trim level across the board so 
Overall, I do like that there's a little bit of kind of indented storage just above the passenger side glove box there. Just below that wireless phone charger, you got a little more storage there. Plenty of USB charging ports. There's a 12 volt power outlet there. To the right of the shifter, there are dual cup holders and within the center armrest here, there is a ton of space. That is more space than I'm definitely used to seeing. That is so much storage space for a three row SUV. It is ridiculous. There's a 12 volt power outlet in there as well. So overall, as far as interior quality goes, it's not bad. There are some hard plastics like surrounding the shifter and cup holders also found on the doors as well. But other than that, it's definitely not bad. I don't have a problem with it at least, but then take a good look at the infotainment screen. It is gonna be an eight inch color touchscreen display for the LE, XLE, and XSE trims, but then a 12.3 inch color touchscreen display for the limited and platinum trim levels. Bluetooth and audio streaming does come standard wireless Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. I always love to emphasize that. Driving information coming standard up there, and of course your radio information. So when it comes to the sound systems, there are two of them. Six speakers is going to come in the LE, XLE, and XSE trims, but then an 11 speaker JBL sound system is going to come on the limited ND platinum trim level. So having said that, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio. Let's see what we got playing today and let's test out the clarity of this one. Why am I dizzy now? That was weird. Anyways, yeah, it pretty much sounds like a six speaker sound system, probably a little above average for a six speaker sound system. The bass was actually more than I expected. Clarity was fine as well. It's just nothing, nothing crazy. It's six speakers for a three row SUV. So that pretty much says it all right there, but it wasn't bad. But last thing I want to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen, at least is when you do put the Highlander in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board, letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always it's going to lead us into safety. And so first, let me start by mentioning IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus, which is the very highest designation given by IIHS. So that pretty much says it all right there. Front side side curtain airbags do come standard. Driver's knee airbag up front, but also a passenger seat cushion airbag. Those last two don't always come standard, so I like that. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard. Toyota Safety Sense 2.5 plus that gives you a pre-collision system with pedestrian detection lane departure alert with steering assist lane tracing assist road sign assist dynamic radar cruise control and a blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert then if you were to go with the limited or platinum you're going to also get front and rear parking sensors so Overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the Highlander, excellent safety. That's always the first thing you should look for in a three row SUV because more than likely you're gonna have kids in the back. So the fact that it's an IIHS top safety pick plus, again, it doesn't get any better than that. That's what Volvos get. So that says it all right there. You gotta love that. Very serene cabin, of course, as well, which kind of surprised me. Kind of luxury-like, actually. So definitely was a big fan of that. As far as room for improvement goes, it is a very tight third row. I will say 27.7 inches is uh, definitely not all that much, but I would imagine you could probably move the uh, second row seats up a little bit if you did have third row passengers and maybe possibly that would help. I don't know. If you did need more space, just go with a Grand Highlander. Also, there are some black plastics in here. I probably would have swapped that out with maybe a gloss black finish, either that or some kind of texture silver plastic finish as opposed to just the matte black plastic like surrounding the cup holders also on the doors there and ultimately the thing in the back of my mind still uh, is this new turbocharged four cylinder they they started putting in the Highlander last year for the 2023 model year I still would prefer the v6 the v6 is pretty substantially faster and it only is one mile per gallon less than you would get with the turbocharged four cylinder so for me I'm going V6. Let me know what you guys think about the Highlander in the comment section below. But that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews because that is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know when I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.